we'll start with the prayers. <clears throat> Om Padram Karne Vishuniyama Devaha Padram Pashe Makshabher Yajatraha Stirai Rangaihi Sushtuvagum Sashtano Vihi Vyashema Devahi Tambyada Yoho Swastina Indro Vrittashravaha Swastina Pusha Vishwavedaha Swastina stak shora rishtane mihi. Swastino brihaspatil dadato. Om shanti shanti shanti. We are studying Munda Koponishan consisting of three chapters, each chapter with two sections, so total six sections, and 64 verses in all. This is the second Upanishad we are taking up after Kaivalya Upanishad. We have finished so far two chapters, and we are in the second chapter, second section, the 11th mantra. What does Mundak Upanishad teach us? Mundak Upanishad teaches us that we are made up of two aspects. One aspect is the visible aspect, which we can see. It is also called as Murtha Prapancha in Bharadhanika Upanishad. Whatever is visible to the sense organs, that is what is called as the seen world, Murtha Prapancha. What is not seen is the activator behind this world. And that is what is called as Amurtha Prapancha. Amurtha depend also, there are two types of Amurtha Prapancha. Okay, there, are, there is one type of Amurtha Prapancha which is not seen. For example, the subtle body, the element air, the element space. It is not seen, it cannot be seen, it is not visible. That is called as Amurtha Prapancha. So you have Murta Prapancha, which is visible. You have Amurta Prapancha, which is invisible. The punch of five elements together constitute the entire cosmos. A Agnani, a person who is not exposed to the Veda, will say that this is the universe, that's all. There's nothing else beyond this. Life is a mixture of sorrow and joy and then we all live and then we die and that's it that's the that is the general concept of the universe when one comes to the upanishad the upanishad takes us something beyond this murta and amurta prapancha there is an activator for this Murtha and Amurtha Prapancha. Murtha plus Amurtha both together constitute what is called as Apara Prakriti, which is matter. In Mundak Upanishad, the whole cosmos is divided into Para Prakriti, Apara Prakriti. So Murtha Prapancha, Amurtha Prapancha, visible world, invisible world, together they form the Apara Prakriti. What is something which is called as Para Prakriti, which I don't know. Only the Upanishad can reveal this to me. And I have full faith in the Upanishads. And that is where Mundaka Upanishad revels in this 
revelation of higher nature called as para prakriti for most of us the human mind is an instrument we all think that that is me and it is in that instrument we 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 feel ourselves we perceive sorrow in the mind but the same mind which reveals the universe to us which we use every day every second of our life it is not an enemy but it can be it can be a friend also so never criticize your mind my mind is angry my mind is like this my mind is like that but use that mind as a powerful tool to go beyond the mind and see what is that which is para prakriti a step by step analysis of this upanishad will lead us to that higher nature which is called as brahman which is called as god which is called as thuriyam which is called as so many names are given to that it is something which is beyond and it is the prerataha it is the activator for the whole cosmos this is how i should understand when the uh, the reality when i come to upanishad i must keep an absolute open mind drop all the wrong notions about my own self and about the universe the only goal should be how is this universe running how is this activated this was the student type of a student in kena upanishad who says how does the mind work how does the speech come how does the prana work so we are all seekers of that knowledge which is the activating principle behind the entire cosmos and through these 64 verses we are trying to understand that we have studied that this para prakriti can be indicated in several terms we have seen that in uh, sixth verse of the first chapter first section we have seen that that is the para prakriti uh, uh, definition of uh, adrishyam uh, uh, agocharam that that definition you can refer to that then in the second chapter first section second verse very very important verses and also in the second chapter second section the first verse and the second verse these are the four verses you have to study these four verses again and again to understand the revelation of para prakriti very beautiful upanishad very structured see how beautiful structuring is done six chapters uh, three chapters six sections totally 64 verses roughly divided into 20 20 20 roughly 60 60 you know 60 64 verses how the upanishad reveals that higher nature it cannot be seen but it a person who goes through this upanishad will understand the truth with this small introduction i will go straight to the mantra which we are supposed to learn today start today i said last week this mantra number 11 is a very important mantra it is the mahavakyam of mundakopanishad mahavakyam is a, a a verse which reveals the identity between the jivatma and the paramatma and here the identity identity is established by showing to us that 
the totality of this world is nothing but the pure Brahman. The reality is called as what? Brahman. This is a Sanskrit term for reality. Now, reality means it is real. It is always there. It is imperishable. It is immortal. Body is mortal, but that reality is immortal. So more I spend my mind towards that reality, thinking about that reality, talking about that reality, listening to that reality, slowly what happens is our minds are drawn towards that reality as the truth. Today, my mind is drawn towards the body and body and mind as the truth. Slowly, we have to shift our attention to that real substance in this entire creation, which is called as the substratum, which is called as the Brahman. Eleventh verse says, this immortal, so now you understand what is this immortal Brahman. It is the reality behind the individual and the total. That immortal Brahman is everywhere. Why? Because he is all-pervading principle. Anywhere you go, this Brahman is there. Anywhere. Above, below, in front, at the back, on the right side, on the left side. Always it is there. Time-wise, no, no limitation. Everywhere it is there. Space-wise, no limitation. So this is a, these two principles, space, time, limitlessness is brought about in this verse. Mahavakya Vichara, this slide is not there in the notes which I have sent to you before. If you need it, you can write to me. I can just send it to you. There's no problem. I mean, uh, but this I just prepared about 10 minutes ago just to explain this verse. I thought that I need to explain this verse slightly better. One truth is there, which is called as the self. It is the self of the individual and it is the self of the total. This is how I should understand Mahavakya. This chart will help you in all the Upanishads. Because this is the central revelation of every Upanishad. If you understand, we have, we, I have taught this in the Kaivali Upanishad also. If you understand this, you have understood Vedanta and you can then say to your, your teacher that, you know, I have understood, my spiritual study is over. I can abide in as Brahman all the time in this whole life. For the rest of my life, I understand this chart 100%, 100% clarity. Now, this self is Advaita. Advaita means it is a non-dual principle. This is a beautiful explanation of the revelation of the scriptural texts by Shankaracharya. And knowing this non-dual truth will give me the freedom from identifying the body and the mind as myself. What is this truth? How do I, what are the ways in which I can understand this truth? The words used by the Upanishads are Satyam, means it is the reality, independent reality. It doesn't depend on anything else. Jnanam, this is a very important word in Vedanta. Jnanam generally refers to knowledge. But here it refers to consciousness, awareness principle. The third word is anantam. Anantam means it is limitless. There is only one thing which is limitless, 
which is always there, whether the body is there or not, consciousness, consciousness is there. Like in sleep, I don't experience my body. I don't experience my mind. I don't experience the world. So is consciousness there? Yes, it is there. And that is what I am. That is the reality. So am I afraid of death? No, because I am that, which is beyond this body, mind, and the world. Knowing this satyam, knowing this anantam, gives me immortality while living in this earth, which is called as jivan mukti, which is called as moksha. Knowing this principle and claiming this as my true self is freedom. This is the teaching of all the Upanishads. Every Upanishad teaches this Mahavakya. Whether it is Bhagavad Gita, whether it is Brahma Sutra, whether it is uh, uh, Mandukya Upanishad, Vardhanika Upanishad, Kena Upanishad, everyone talks of this chart. So, the self is non-dual, it is described in the Upanishads as Satyam Jnana Vanantam. In Mundaka Upanishad, it is defined as Aksharam. In Mandukya Upanishad, it is defined as Turiyam. In Brahardhanika Upanishad, it is described as Brahman. Satyam Jnana Manantam is described in Taitri Upanishad. So I have combined four Upanishads to define this truth. What, where and how can I know this truth? Very easy Upanishad says. Every time you experience the universe, you feel that you are that truth. That's all. Remember these six words and say that is the truth, I am that. Okay, fine, I am in the waking world, I can do actions, I can do certain activities, I can do my duty, that can go on. That is Vyavaharika. But what is the real truth? Reality is the substratum, which is this principle. Never forget that. Mahabhakyam says, the whole cosmos can be divided into Jeevatma and Paramatma. Param Atma. Param means supreme, supreme self. Jiva, Atma. Jiva means the individual self. The individual self is called as Thvam Pada, me. In Sanskrit, it is called as Thvam Pada Vichara. Anytime I want to analyze myself, like in Taitri Upanishad, we all discuss about the Panchakoshas. Manduki Upanishad, we discuss about the three avastas which we experience. So anytime I'm trying to understand myself through these prakriyas, methodologies, I am that individual jiva who is trying to understand myself, which is the Thvam Pada Vichara. When I try to understand myself, I see the body, I see the five koshas, I can see, uh, when I see my body is full of organs, sula shariram, sushma shariram, I can know this. And the Upanishad themselves says that it says, sthula sharira, sushma sharira, karana sharira is the jiva. So what the Upanishad says is, that self, which is the reality, is appearing as this jiva in the waking state with various features. There are, there are thousands, there are uh, uh, you know, uh, so many billions of people in the, on the, in, the, in the universe. But they are all one principle. 
it is a reflection of one principle which is appearing as this all the individuals put together so in the individual there are two components the variable component the mind is variable it keeps on changing body is variable young old middle age adult male female all these are all different features the features which are variable are called as anatma not atma what is atma it is the consciousness it is existing in the mind as the witness of everything which the individual does that is why we are able to know our mind mind is directly cognized by sakshi the world is cognized indirectly by sakshi through the mind and sense organs but the sakshi is the consciousness which is always there behind the mind this is called as jiva analysis this is the ultimate ground on which i realize the truth that self which is the pure advaita principle in this body is the self the atma which is called as sakshi the witness of the mind witness of all our emotions thoughts always there have you ever lost the witness hood of your mind since birth no it is always there can i say that that is the truth yes of course you can say so the moment you understand there is a changeless principle and a changing principle the changeless principle is the consciousness the changing principle is the body and mind don't identify with the body and mind as yourself that is only incidental it is called as the lower nature what is the higher nature it is that witness consciousness so with this you have come to one side of the equation the jivatma portion now you come to the right hand side parmatma parmatma is called as tatpada uh, lakshyartha tatpada means that ishwara which is the totality now jiva is the individual in this world all of them all the stula sharira put together is this parmatma all the sukshma sharira put together is this parmatma all the karana sharira put together is this parmatma like you have the jivatma with the mind similarly the parmatma the totality is also there with hiranyagarbha as the mind sukshma sharira sukshma prapancha now the upanishad says there are two components in the totality what are the two components exactly like the jivatma parmatma also has the variable features stola prapancha sukshma prapancha karana prapancha this is the three variables of that param atma supreme atma and then there is a changeless principle which is called as brahman or the self or turiyam or satyam jnanam anantam that is the changeless self now what they say is the changeless self in the individual is the same changeless self in the totality that is called as aikyam that is what is called as the oneness in the universe that oneness is the substratum according to vedanta this variable features are are a superimposition like dream is a superimposition on the human mind making mind rope snake is a superimposition on the rope mirage water is a superimposition on the sand 
Similarly, the jiva portion, the parama portion, are a superimposition on the pure consciousness. What I do is by bhaga tyaga lakshana. This is a technical term used in Mahavakya analysis. Very very important word bhaga tyaga lakshana. I have not put it here. Maybe you can just put it later on. So by removing the variable component and retaining the invariable component. I arrive at the grand vision of this whole universe, which is the reality, which is the self, which is Satyam Jnana Manantham, which is called as Aksharam in Mundaka Upanishad, Turiyam in Mandukya, and Brahman in Brahdhana Upanishad. Names can be many, but the reality is one. I drop the identification with the variable body and mind and see this in whole universe as me, the self. The self in me is the self in all, which is pure existence, consciousness, bliss, and that together is called as Brahman. This is the vision which the verse, this 11th verse is trying to bring about. Brahman is everywhere, he is above, he is below. This is a figurative expression. Don't take it literally. It's only a figurative expression. What it means is this. This is God. This is the depth of Mundaka Upanishad. This is a central portion of Mundaka Upanishad. If you understand this, you have understood all the verses, which Mundaka verses, 64 verses you want to learn understand this chart. If you have any doubts on this, I'll be very happy to explain to you again anytime, but don't worry, we will be revising this chart in every Upanishad. This finishes the second chapter. Second chapter is the most important chapter of the entire Mundaka Upanishad because it has the Mahavakyam and it has God's now, Tatra Suryo Bhati, that mantra which is there in the second chapter, then it talks about the flame. Once one fire principle expresses as many sparks, similarly, one consciousness expresses in many minds as the Sakshi principle. Then Divyoya Murti, that uh, indicative uh, indicator mantra of uh, definition of. Uh, Brahman is there in this chapter, the second verse of the first section. Okay, the Pranava Upasana, Omkara Upasana is there in this, in this section. That light of all lights is described in this section, in this chapter. So, the second chapter is very, very beautiful. And for those of you who want to study Mundaka Upanishad, go through these important verses. Next week, I will prepare the 17 verses which are important of this Upanishad. I will put it up in the notes also. Uh, 17, 1, 7, 17 verses. Very important verses. If you want to revise Mundok Upanishad, you can always go back to these 17 verses. You will never miss the essence. Whenever you study these classes, you must remember that at the back of my mind, I must be able to bring back the, the, the sessions again in my mind. And that is what is called as manana. So first is shravana, you listen to the class. Second is manana, you have to do yourself. Keep a small notebook of all these 17 verses as important. Similarly, Kaivalya Upanishad also, I gave you some mantras as important. Every three, four months, take out this small book where you have written all the important mantras, go through it. Just study the verse and the meaning, verse and the meaning. This will help you to retain the knowledge in your mind. You can formulate your own notes and use those notes to identify 
the real truth behind the cosmos. The third chapter is what now we are entering. It has got two sections. And uh, I am not sure whether can we can, we'll try and see whether we can finish it today. The first, okay, now this section also has got uh, important verses. I have put, there are four important verses, two important verses, first verse and the second verse in the first section, the sixth and the ninth verse in the second section. What are the first two verses? Mundak Upanishad is extremely famous. If you buy this book from Chinmaya Mission, uh, you know, uh, or any other, generally, you will find there are two birds right in the picture of the in the right in the front of the book. That is because of this verse: Dwa Suparna Sayuja Sakaya Samamam. What does this verse say? In a Consider this word, this body as a tree. There are, there are four or five verses now we are going to do with this drishtanta. This example, we are going to understand what is the darshtanta. What is the reality we are going to understand with reference to one example explaining, explained in four verses. One, two, three, four. Two birds are there in a tree. That is how this verse introduces. They are very close to each other. They are intimate friends. They can never leave each other. Like even in, in our real, real life, sometimes we have very close friends. We want to have, we always want to be with them. Now they are perched in the same tree. Where are they living in the same world? Their world is what? The body tree. So in my body, there are two principles. One is the ego principle, ahamkara principle, and the second is sakshi. One of them eats the fruits of the tree and relishes them. Whole day, the, uh, there is one bird which is going up, going down, going this side to the right, left, it's just eating all the, all the fruits, enjoying the fruits. So in this body, there is a ego ahamkara. It wants to see the mobile. <coughs> it wants to go and eat good food for the tongue. For the ears, it wants to listen to good music. For the nose, it wants to smell the flowers in the garden. So all the five sense organs are the fruits enjoyed by the sense objects and the sense organs are the fruits and the sense objects which are now enjoyed by the one bird. While the other bird, what is the other bird is doing? So, Ahamkara ego is the one which keeps on going outside into the world and it is enjoying the fruits of the world. What is the other bird doing? It is only watching, witnessing, consciousness. It does not eat anything. It does not enjoy anything. There are no activities it is, involved, it is involved in. It is just a principle which is present. So there is one principle which is of presence, another principle which is of enjoyment, doership. Both are where? In the same body. One is behind the intellect. Just now we saw Brahman, the consciousness, Turiyam, Satya, Jnana, Manantam, is that Sakshi. The other one is all which we know very well. I, 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 the whole day we are enjoying this I, ego. I am running, I am jogging, I am eating, I am uh, I'm seeing a movie, I am seeing this, I am releasing the world. That is the first bird. 
the top of the tree the quietly sitting in a serene calm fashion is the not eating food, uh, uh, not eating bird in the lower branch is the one which is going around it goes to the top it goes to another food comes back and eats every day every time all the team throughout from morning to evening this bird is going into the world to enjoy the world our whole life is explained in this verse i am that ego factor which is running behind the world this ego is nothing but a chaya a shadow of that other bird the sakshi bird is there therefore this jiva bird is alive without that sakshi there is no jiva second verse is a continuation there are four verses which talk of this example seated on the same tree samane vrikshe purusho nimagno nishaya sochati mukhyamanaha in the same tree the ego bird is there what is the what is the characteristic of this ego bird it is in full of ignorance it is always deluded two functions of a jiva agnani he is full of ignorance about his own self which is a sakshi and completely deluded all the time thinking that the world is real going after the world never knowing the reality is not the world but reality is behind the mind which is a sakshi so just turning outward from outward vision the moment the set bird realizes and draws and go, looks behind it has got the vision and it is free then he sees the lord the witness the consciousness which is full of glory always calm he becomes free from dejection this is the proof that the study of upanishads will give end to sorrow in life very important verse second verse the first verse is just a description what's happening in the world two birds are there one is eating the fruits one is not eating second verse very important the first bird through viveka vairagyam samada shatka sampatti mumukshutvam starts looking withdrawing from the world or where the fruits are temporary transient world it the world the fruits i can enjoy for a short time not a permanent bliss which i can enjoy priya moda pramoda fleeting joys that ego that jiva this this example is so beautiful it come it gives us our own status having seen the world paranchikani which we did last week having seen the world which is there it is it is it is very glitzy it is there but when you go near to something and then you see the truth it is like the mirage water i thought there is happiness there disappear i thought there is happiness when i have the first house second house third house gone happiness gone i don't know where it went again i'm deluded again i'm confused i thought if i make the first million 10th million 100 million dollars i'll be very happy i made all that money but then what happened i don't know happiness is never there it just is a fleeting that is what is the second bird's realization very beautiful mantra very important mantra for all seekers is a mundaka upanishad is very famous for this so understand these verses as teaching me that there is no joy in the world i am the first jiva bird looking at the world as reality i have to become that sakshi look inward 
withdraw from the world not physically but intellectually the lord as pure consciousness as the self is always joyful bliss that is his nature because this joy does not depend on the world atmane atmana tushtaha sthita pratnyascha dochate he is full in himself because he knows the truth i am the substance behind the entire creation i am brahman aham brahma asmi jnani is always happy and blissful never dependent on the world to give joy he has known the truth you and i can know the same truth from this upanishad and be fulfilled today we are all the ego we are helpless shochati in grief this happened to me that happened to me this small things happened to me come on forget it look inside look at the sakshi and be happy that is what is the upanishad teaching us delusion is our occupation we are always deluded delusion means what the world is real run after in, uh, running after the world avidya means ignorance kama means desire karma means action phala means the fruit of action vasanas the imprints in my mind they are all they are all there but they are not real that is what is the teaching they are there it can be experienced but it has got a purpose to look inward and realize the truth that's all because of these things i am even afraid to die i am always miserable see this ego all this put together is this i the small i the small i looks at the big i capital i the capital i is this big s without the capital i the small i doesn't exist because the existence is borrowed from the capital i consciousness in this body is borrowed from the capital i which is pure all the time in the presence of the pure consciousness my mind is activated it goes into the world to enjoy certain things after enjoying the fruits of this body it will take another body that is the nature of the world but i coming to vedanta can drop this identification and look inward and realize the truth as the sakshi the third verse यदा पश्य पश्यता पश्यते व्हेन द सीयर रियलाइजेस द एवर सेल्फ एफल्जेंट सुप्रीम बी सी द साक्षी इज द अल्टीमेट रियलिटी इट इज बियॉन्ड द कारणम एंड कार्य ओके it is not karanam it is not karyam it is defined as something beyond karanam and karya and it is self effulgent self effulgent means what it can be known by itself there is nothing in this universe which can be known by itself except i the consciousness that is why i say that in the sleep state then the whole world is not being aware by me that consciousness na tatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam that consciousness is shining i realize that substratum as the truth that is what is being explained in this verse as the seer seer consciousness that consciousness is self effulgent it is not like the sun because the sun is there the effulgence of the sun falls on the earth and i can see the whole universe i can see earth i can see the trees i can see 
human beings, animals, everything I can see in the daytime. Why? Because the sun is shining. This verse says that behind the sun also, there is one principle called as the supreme being, Paramatma. Purusham Brahma Yonim. Purusham Brahma Yonim. Brahma Yonim means it is the yoni of the entire cosmos. Yoni means the womb. It is called as Brahman. It is called as the Supreme Being. Tada Vidwan Punya Pape Vidyoyaha Niranjanaha Paramam Samyam Upaiti. When the Jiva realizes that Paramatma, which is stainless, which is spotless, it is always pure. He attains that supreme being, knowing the supreme is being one with that, because that happens to be the self. This is Vedanta, where knowing itself is realizing, knowing itself is the fruit. In anything else you do in the uh, in the normal transaction, knowing is separate, doing is separate, uh, doing is separate, knowing is separate. They are two different things. But when it comes to the self, knowing itself is realizing that I am the truth. That is why they say that na karma na, na, uh, na, uh, uh, na uh, through karma you cannot not realize the self, but only through jnana. Two purushas are there. Dwami Bhav Purusha Loke, Shara Akshara Yod. This is from chapter 15 of Bhagavad Gita, the verse. Yeah? The same thing is now is actually this has been taken. This is a seed mantra for that mantra in the Bhagavad Gita. Two purushas, Paramatma, Jivatma. One Paramatma eating uh, uh, doesn't eat anything. It is always there, self-shining, reveling in its own glory, stainless, pure, niranjanaha. The other word, Jivatma, is always restless. Every Jivatma is restless. Don't think you are the only one restless in this world. Huh? We all think that I am the only one who is restless. You know, I am suffering. And, uh, no, no, no. Everybody is restless. Don't worry. Everybody has got the similar mind. We are carried away by our own temp uh, by the temptations of the world. The pancha sense objects and the pancha sense organs, they are interacting and I am the mind which is going behind them all the time. Morning I get up and make a list of things to do. Why? Because I want to enjoy the world. Cannot stop it. That is why the jiva has taken birth in this body. But knowledge, come to this knowledge of Sakshi bird. By repeated practice, this Jivatma sees the Paramatma bird and realizes that he is also Brahman. See how that Mahavakya helps you to understand this mantra. See the sequence, how the Upanishad has presented the Mahavakya first and then immediately followed in the immediate third, in the third chapter, first section, it gives the two words. What a beautiful presentation. So the Jivatma, which is full of merits or demerits, Punyam and Papam, attains one with the Paramatma. And what happens to that? All its ignorance, which is called as Mula Vidya, goes away once and for all. Then what happens? That Paramatma is shining all the time in our hearts all the time, because that is there. That is what the Upanishad says, have full faith. You will also realize this. Just study the Upanishads, that's all. Your mind will become absolutely pure. Don't ever have a confusion or a delusion that I am impure. How can I be this pure? How can I realize? It's very easy. Just go through these talks, Revise them in your free time. Let your mind sink in the subconscious level that I am this Sakshi. 
you shift from jiva bhava to sakshi bhava first step and the next step is sakshi bhava to brahma bhava very beautiful step by step process of mundaka upanishad fourth mantra this prana we think that it is the life factor but what is the life factor this consciousness this is what is explained in the fourth one prana means it is the sutra atma sutra atma means it is the totality principle of the whole universe the whole universe is governed by kiranya garbha principle the subtle body principle the subtle body is invisible it cannot be seen by the sense organs it is the power behind the sense organs so ishvara the ultimate controller is called as sutra atma when we refer to the total prana shakti in the universe this jiva realizes that consciousness is the one behind this hiranyagarbha principle and that is the creator ishvara is a controller ultimate controller of the universe it is the karana shariram it is the maya principle it has got a subtle body which is the invisible amurta prapancha and murta prapancha the maya shakti is the creator maintainer annihilator of the entire finite world your feelings my feelings your thoughts my thoughts all of them they are existing in potential condition in ishvara in the karana shariram that karana shariram yeah, from there only we come every day out into the world see we are all sleeping where we are sleeping in our own karana shariram every day you are sleeping in your karana shariram i am sleeping in my karana shariram karana sharira means what it is a potential condition of the mind karanam what about the mind it is karyam what is the stola shariram karyam it is a product karanam means it is the cause we are all coming from the cause which is the potential condition which is called as the maya shakti or the karana shariram or the avidya there are all different terms for the karana shariram so the potential condition is expressed manifested again it goes to unmanifest again it goes to unmanifest manifest this is what is the cycle of the world so we don't need to insist on anything we accept that this is the nature of the world and this is the wisdom which we need to learn from the upanishads how do i how do i get this knowledge of the self that is a question so four verses are finished it finish this with this verse we finish the drishtanta the bird example is over now the upanishad is trying to teach us how can i learn this atma vidya by tapasa what is the what are the feet what are the means to attain the knowledge of atma there are four factors which are given here what are the four factors satyam nityam satyena labhyataha being ever truthful in life 
one of the, these are all the disciplines. The Upanishad now coming, comes down to the lower levels. It is finished teaching of the higher levels of Atma, Brahman, and so on. Now it is coming to teach us how to realize that through some disciplines. Nityam Japasaha. Here, Japasa means doing one's duty with single pointed attention. Every time I'm doing my duty, morning, evening, afternoon, morning, evening, half, throughout my life, I do my duty. Duty to my wife, duty to my family, duty to my uh, the, the, the society in which you live. Keep doing your duty. Truthful always. Samyak jnanena, clear knowledge. Through the Upanishad, I start getting the knowledge of the reality. Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya means sense control. So, what are the four things? Always speaking the truth. Some people don't even tell the truth, even by mistake. Some people tell the truth all the time. Some people tell the truth sometimes and sometimes not. Here the Upanishad, what does the Upanishad say? Ever be truthful, that's all. Speak the truth, speak the truth all the time. Why? Why truth is established here? Because you are ultimately searching for the truth of the world. Satyam, next verse will tell us sat, sat, uh, the, 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 the importance of truth. Satyame vajayate nanrutam satyena pantha vitato Beyond. What is the truth? Truth alone wins. Satya meva jayate. Untruth always uh, wins in the name of truth. I am telling the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. This is Satya meva jayate. What is anratam? What is the illusion? We all think that untruth will win. I shall tell you the untruth, the whole untruth, nothing but the untruth. But actually, what is he saying? He is telling only the truth. That untruth wins. Untruth will win is also true. Basically, what it means is speak the truth. The essence is by truth is laid the path of divine journey. That truth principle is free from desires. And it is a supreme abode of all the truth. Suppose you speak the truth. Why do you speak the truth? Because you are attached to that Satyam principle. You cannot say anything except the truth. A jnani will never utter a false, a false uh, thing in life. Never. He's so attached to that truth. Aham Brahma asked me, how can he ever speak untruth? See, this is... This is Satya Meva Jayate is a very important principle in India during the freedom, freedom fighting. Okay, so now slowly see how Munduk Upanishad tells us what are the disciplines, disciplines to follow, Brahmacharyam, Satyam, keeping a relaxed mind all the time. Suppose your mind is jittery, Tell your mind to relax. That's why meditation is extremely important. I have meditation sessions on Wednesday because it helps everybody. If you, if you are practicing meditation regularly, you will see the difference. If you don't do meditation one day, you will feel, you feel something is missing. This is like a, it's like a going for a walk every day. It becomes your own, it becomes your own uh, daily routine. And it's very useful to calm the mind. I've seen plenty of people who do meditation, who have, I mean, a lot of seekers have come back to me and say this, your meditation sessions on Nirvana Shatkam is beautiful. Why? Because it tells you for five to 10 minutes, your mind dwells on the Nirvana Shatkam. The six verses which helps you to calm the mind. Next verse. 
यम यम लोक लोकम मनसा संभवती विशुद्ध सत्वा कामयते वॉट एवर स्पियर द मैन इज प्यूरिफाइड फ्रॉम इज डिजायर्स this verse tells us that a self realized jnani will attain all his desires because ultimately kama and uh, artha and dharma and kama they all are standing on the moksha purusha that's why jnani is given a very high pedestal in our vedanta see a guru can bless us with book, uh, with the pleasures of life also that is why never many people go to a guru and ask guru please bless me because he is a pure mind when his sankalpa comes this man should have this pleasure he blesses the person it happens in chandogya upanishad it says that a person who has realized this self whatever he thinks in his mind that is the truth it will happen it happens i mean this is these are all some shaktis which are gained by jnanis guru can give bhukti and mukti by mere sankalpa but it depends on what you ask you don't go to a, a guru and say i want a uh, 5 million dollars tomorrow don't ask like that see he cannot produce 5 million dollars for you it cannot you go and ask for purity of mind give me some nishkama karma to gain prosperity one must worship the man of wisdom then he has a hotline with god this is how some acharyas they express person without ego individuality is pure and is one with parmatma see what happens is when my ego comes keeps coming down i you will realize two things when you keep studying vedanta the upanishads brahma sutra the bhagavad gita slowly but surely your mind will change 100% this is a guarantee so many people have come and told me this no people who have been following some of these talks with me for 10 years now they have been telling me that you know i am a totally changed person transform why because you see the the purity our mind can be purified only by the study of shastra no other method this is the washing soap to wash our minds keep listening to the scriptures again and again again and again it will purify the mind and the inner enemies kama krodha lobha madha matsarya these are all the inner enemies they all are afraid of self knowledge them because what happens is the tendency of all these thoughts to fructify they all get burnt once you have this nyan sankalpa arises only in parmatma parmatma is the ultimate substrate that's what it says parmatma is powerful and uh, therefore the guru sankalpa takes shape into fulfillment okay so that is some this so what did the first section now teach us it taught us the the third chapter first section it taught us that two birds are there that example it taught in the first four mantras then it taught us what are the disciplines which we should have how we should become free from impurities in our mind now we go to the third step, uh, third chapter second section here the first two mantras uh, and, and here the sixth and the ninth mantra are important mantras 
in the first in the previous section the first two mantras the basically the doa suparna mantra is very very famous shankaracharya uses that you know all the acharyas they love mundaka upanishad for that first and second mantra of the third chapter first section if you read shankara bhashyam you will see that he quotes this mantra so often shankaracharya third section now here it mainly deals with karma uh, karma it deals with this jnana phalam the section this is the last section it tells us basically it tells us that you will be free from sorrow jeevan mukti and videha mukti that is the essence of the second section the supreme brahman is the substratum on which the whole world is shining first mantra when a jnani dwells on this truth again and again in his nididhyasanam what happens to him he becomes free from rebirth see that is a this is a pramana this is the proof in the veda which says if you realize this truth called as brahman by mahavakya vichara and you meditate that i am that brahman what will happen to you you will not get another birth into a body because it is full of suffering this is what is said in the kathopanishad also in the in kathopanishad this is the verse which is being quoted what does it say in the kathopanishad same message is there this jnani in the where does he see this truth in the cave of his intellect what does he see he sees the supreme truth and what is the truth called brahman and what is the universe it is a shadow chaya and what is the light every shadow can it have can is a shadow independent without the light no unless the light is there a shadow cannot happen for the shadow called as the universe what is the light brahman is the light that is what is said in the katha upanishad it also gives some examples of i mean some other details of uh, uh, nachiketa ritual which is there a uh, uh, fire ritual which is as given as a boon to nachiketa those details i am not going in now but the essence of this verse is how to have no re how to have no rebirth verse 2 says कामयते मन्यमाते वेर एवर अवर मैंड इज गोइंग वेर डज अवर मैंड यूजली गो इट गोज टू दि ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ डिजायर वेन इट गोज टू दम ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ डिजायर वॉट हेपन्स दट इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड इज ब्रूडिंग सेम प्रिंसिपल ध्यायतो विषयान पुंसा संगस्ते शुप जायते संगा संगायते कामा दैट वर्स ऑफ दी भगवत गीता सेकंड चैप्टर इज बीइंग रिपीटेड हियर सो इफ योर थॉट्स आर देयर फॉर द एंजॉयमेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड फॉर द फुलफिलमेंट ऑफ दोस डिजायर्स यू विल बी बोर्न अगेन दिस इज अ अज्ञानी बट व्हाट इज द केस ऑफ अ ज्ञानी द सीयर The seer has already found the atma, and when he remembers his atma, there are no desires left in his mind. This is how the desires get burned. Sanchita karma, agami karma are burned because of the fire of knowledge of Brahma Vidya. This is the proof. See, many times we will say, where does it say in the Vedas 
that the Sanchita Karmas are burnt and you have no rebirth, these are the verses of the Upanishads. One with desire comes back to this loka. That means, you know, this is, this, this is a proof of rebirth also. Jnani's desires are all dissolved, therefore he is free from this birth also, because he knows that the birth and death is of the body, not of the Atma. There is no coming and going for a Jnani. From a Jnani standpoint, he doesn't even have a proud of the karma, forget about it. But from a Jnani point, you will see a Jnani doing a lot of actions, therefore you will say, he, therefore the Upanishad says, his proud of the karma he has to fulfill, therefore he is still there. But from Jnani is already dissolved in the thought of Brahman. I am that Brahman. Aham Brahma asked me. Jiva Bhava to Sakshi Bhava, Sakshi Bhava to Brahma Bhava. Keep this mantra all the time in your mind. Today I am a Jiva Bhava, triangular format. I want to become Sakshi Bhava, binary pro format. Triangular format means Jiva Jagat Ishwara. As Agnani, we are in the triangular format. I am the Jiva, there is a creator, and there is a Jagat. This is called as Jiva Bhava. Sakshi Bhava, that triangle has become two. How? There is only one Sakshi, witness, and the entire world. Jiva Jagat Ishwara is Anatma, Sakshi is Atma. This is Sakshi Bhava. And what is the third Bhava? Brahma Bhava. What is Brahma Bhava? Non-dual, unitary, one alone is there, Arupa Ishvara, Advaitam principle, Brahma Bhava, Moksha Bhava. I am always free. I am always free. I don't have any other duties to do. I have crossed over sorrows of samsara. Next verse. Naya Matma Pravachane na Labhyaha na Medhaya na Bahuna Shutena. Very famous verse of uh, Mundak Upanishad. This is also very often quoted. The self is not attained through talks, discourses, not by memorizing verses. Whole Mundak Upanishad I know by heart. Did you get Atma? No. Memorization is in the intellect. You have to understand the Mahavakya. I have done all the Upanishads, 12 Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Brahma, Brahma, Brahma Sutra, 555 Sutras, I have done. But is your sorrow gone? Sorrow is not gone, means transformation has not happened. You have not absorbed the teaching. It is gone from the left ear, it is gone out from the right ear. It is gained by only him who wishes to attain it. I must have love for Atma, Atma Jnana. In my own heart, I don't have to tell my wife and my children that I love this Atma. I am really, really in love with Atma. I want to be with that Atma. It's in my own heart, in my own emotional self. To such a person, Atma Vivrunude Tan Swayam. That Atma reveals itself to that jnani, to that person who desires it. So here there is a technique to realize the self. Be in love with the Shastra. Again and again, learn the Shastra, repeat the learning. Why do, you read, why do you read the Upanishad again and again? Kaivalya Upanishad says in the end, go through this Kaivalya Upanishad again and again. What will you attain? Atma. Atma Jnana. This is the highest in the world. In this world, there is nothing else higher than the Atma Jnana, Brahma Jnana. Just try it out and see whether it gives you the fulfillment. Very soon you will realize, oh my God, there is so much of 
happiness in this knowledge because that is a truth that is myself one who has intense longing for atma gains the atma lord chooses and reveals his nature to his devotee guru teaches and a person gets the knowledge a guru knows this is a student who is really serious about getting this knowledge the guru will go all out his way out of his way to go and help him because he is a person with full of desire for the knowledge the supreme devotion for the lord and the guru and the words of scriptures one gets the knowledge of brahma vidya as if as clear as a daylight i am that brahman which is beyond the sleep state karana sharira avastha full stop i believe in the shastra munda upanishad has told me there are two birds i am the sakshi bird i am not the jiva bird accepted i will hold on to this knowledge नायमात्मा बलहीने न लभ्या नच प्रमादा तपसो विपल लिंगा व्हाट डज दिस वर्ड से नॉलेज कांट बी गेन्ड बाय फिजिकली और मेंटली वीक पर्संस इट रिक्वायर्स द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ कैरेक्टर डिस्पैशन एफर्ट दिस आर द फोर डिसिप्लिन्स विवेक वैराग्य क्षमा दशतक संपत्ति मुमुक्षुत्व self is gained not by the weak people you see weak people will go after the word they will never go for brahma vidya you will never find a person who is full of ego wants to have enjoyment in the world he will never come to atma vidya he will never be able to a man of strength you know who can practice austerities he is a wise man full of strive and vigor attention concentration he is a one single focused again and again studying the upanishad it requires the strength of character that is what is the fourth verse the next verse vedanta vigyana sunishchitartha sanyasa yoga yata yas shuddha sattvaha te brahma lokeshu paranta kale परमार्थ परिमुच्यंति सर्वे दिस इज अ फ्रॉम महानारायण उपनिषद आल्सो दिस दिस वर्स कम्स दिस वर्स इज संग व्हेनेवर यू इनवाइट अ स्वामी जी इनटू योर टाउन और इनटू योर हाउस यू यू चैंट दिस व्हाट डज दिस से इट इज अ रिमाइंडर टू अ ज्ञानी हु इज अ एग्जांपल ऑफ who is a renunciate and who has attained brahma vidya so it is a reminder to those uh, swami ji's that you are that higher reality those who have attained a certain the meaning and got their mind purified they become one with parmatma well a certain that means what you need to do is clear your doubts mananam nididhyasanam hold on to the supreme truth this shravanam shravanam mananam nididhyasanam through these three steps what happens the mind gets purified when the mind gets purified there are 16 facets of purusha they are all merged into the ultimate reality what are the 16 facets it is mentioned prana shraddha pancha mahabhut indriyas annam viryam tapaha mantra karma phalam lokah lokeshu nama these are the 16 things which are attached to the jiva all these 16 merge with the ultimate truth all beings are identified by name on merging with brahman you become one with brahman in one of the upanishad it says that only the name 
remains. I think it is in this also, it will come later. Anyway, so the man of realization becomes one with Brahma. Next is a very important verse. This is an important verse, ninth verse, the sixth verse. Vedanta Vijnana Sunishchitartha, that one and the ninth word, these are two important mantras of this section. What does this mantra say? The one who knows Brahman becomes Brahman. Brahmaiva Veda, Brahmaiva Bhavati. This is the important part of this whole verse. And in his line, no one will be born. He crosses grief and he breaks the knot of Ajnana, becomes immortal. See, so many things are said in this. What is the fruit of having this Brahma Vidya? No person in his family will be ignorant of Brahman means what? Others will also get the knowledge because this jnani will teach others how to walk this path, how to cross papam, which is the grief, cause for all the grief, how to be free from ignorance of the self, free from karma, free from karma, Avidya, Kama, Karma, these are the three knots. Through these three knots, the jiva is tied to this body. Very important point of Vedanta. What are the three knots? The three knots of the rope by which the jiva is tied to this body is self-ignorance, desire and action. Through the knowledge of the Brahma Vidya, what do I get? I can break all the three knots and become free. Free from what? self ignorance free from desire, free from all actions, because Brahman is something which is not the doer. It is always in the presence of Brahman, everything is happening. That is the knowledge. That knowledge makes me immortal. The next verse, the two verses left. Brahman is the substratum and the illuminator of this verse, of this whole universe. So this Mundak Upanishad, what has it taught me? Ultimately, you should remember that By learning the Vedas, by doing Upasana, with full faith, when I do certain rituals, which are called as Ekarshi, this is a special ritual mentioned in the scriptures. The students of Vedanta, when they do such a ritual, with Shirovrata. This is, I'm not going to go into the depth of the Shirovratam uh, ritual. This is generally done by sannyasis uh, uh, with the books of Vedas on their head. They walk the, uh, through the fire a few times and then they chant certain mantras. Ultimately, what is it is saying is Brahma Vidya is an illuminator of this universe. That is the knowledge which I have to pick up. Once I have known, see, there is only one illuminator, which is the consciousness principle. There is only one substratum, which is the existence principle. Existence, consciousness together is the ultimate basis on which the whole universe is appearing and disappearing. Manifestation and unmanifestation is taking place of this whole universe in something which is called as Brahman. My eyes cannot see that Brahman, but that is the truth which Upanishads reveal. And who will not receive this knowledge? Angiras, the Rishi says, he is the teacher of this Upanishad. And he says what? 
he says that one who is not purified in his mind will not be able to comprehend fully, completely this knowledge. You have to have certain disciplines in life. That discipline will help you, help you to withdraw and make your mind inward. We have gone through this discipline in this Upanishad itself. And then finally, Angiras, the Guru says, Namaprama Rishibhyo, Namaprama Rishibhya. Thank you to all the sages of the past. Thanks to all the sages of the past. Salutations to the sages of the past who have given me this parampara. You see, this is a tradition of the transfer of the highest Brahma Vidya through the verses of these Upanishads. This is still maintained and transformed to people like us who are the seekers of this knowledge. It is a Rishi, Rinam. By studying this Upanishads, whatever we have supposed to do as a duty in this life, we are doing it. These are all certain things which we cannot see. It is our own fortune that we are learning. These type of verses, they are all coming into our life because of some punyam of which, which has happened in the past in our lives. With this mantra, I close today's session and also the entire essence of the Mundaka Upanishad. The verses for introspection is given in the end. There are 17 verses. I will add the list of those verses to this section next week. Uh, it, it will just the 17 mantras, it is there. Uh, so with this, I close the essence portion. Next week, I'm going to start Mundaka Upanishad, second version. As explained to you earlier, I will be taking some aspects from Anubhuti Prakasha. Anubhuti Prakasha is a text by Swami Vidyaranya, who has written the text called as Panchadasi also. So, I will take, there are 100 verses in that, 100 verses for these 64 verses. I do not know whether I would like to go through each and every verse, whether you would like me to go through those verses, and even though it can be fast, whether you would like to go through the verses, each uh, of them, or whether you want just the important verses, about 25, 30 verses. Uh, I'm, uh, you can tell me in, your, in, your, in the, uh, in the Q&A session today, what you'll want. If you want me to go through the, all the 100 verses in a very quick fashion, maybe 10 verses, 12 verses in a week, I can do that, or I can just consolidate and tell you only the 20, 25 verses. Choice is yours. You tell me what you want, and I'll follow. Thank you. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Any questions on today's session? Yeah. Uh, Hari Om. Yeah, yeah. Saro, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you for the session today. Uh, my question is, uh, see, uh, more, while it says that focus on the duties, 100% uh, concentrate on that, but also of self-realized Ramana Maharishi, albeit uh, uh, Shankaracharya, they were all the people who left the world, in the, the internet of the world. But my point is, the more one, one that you know, reduce, intellectually reduce the interaction with the world, but physically, I, my body can interact with the world. Yes, you're right. It certainly becomes much easier if I withdraw from the world also, because otherwise the pulls are very. It's uh, the 
skills are there. Yes, I agree with you, but it, it, it is possible that uh, the what the Upanishad says very clearly is, you can still remain in society, you can re still remain in the world, but by constantly following the study in your free time, you can still enjoy the same benefit, whatever uh, uh, you know, a, a Swamiji can enjoy, you also can enjoy. It is only ultimately it comes to the knowledge you can gain the knowledge as a grihastha. You can gain the knowledge as a sannyasi. Uh, for a sannyasi, it is easier because what you say is correct. You know that he has no uh, he has no duties to perform as such. You withdraw, therefore it will be easier. But for people like us who are already finding ourselves in the householders' ashrama. Right. We can still continue learning these Upanishads and trying to become free. In fact, more reactions are because of being in the world. Yes. You see, there are many advantages of being a householder also. You see, you, you see the, for, for, there are a lot of strengths for both and there are weaknesses for both the ashramas. Okay. You know, the householder, no, householder strength is you don't have to go running for food. Okay, yeah. You see, uh, a sannyasi doesn't know where his next meal is coming from. Yes, yes. See, you, you already, so there is a, there's a lot of security for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas for a sannyasi, there's zero security except the Lord. So there are advantages and disadvantages of these both the ashramas. Right. Lord Krishna was a householder. Was a household, right? Yes. So it is an example that you no need to be a sannyasi to become to gain this Brahma Vidya. And also to enjoy the world. My only thing is enjoyment of the world without an attachment to it. Yes. You see, yeah. that is the way you do it is this body is born, body will go through its parar of the karma. It is doing whatever action it is supposed to do, and that's it. I am not. Uh, uh, taking this as my as the full reality. See, there is a slight change, a transformation in my mind. That's all. It, uh, it is an internal God. transformation. It is a cognitive transformation. Physically, nothing is going to change. I will still be having my waking state, dream state, sleep state till the yes. last breath. That is not going to change. Yes. Yes. But my vision will change. Jiva Bhava, Sakshi Bhava, Brahma Bhava. These three words keep in mind. Let it run into your mind. Slowly you will shift from Jiva to Sakshi. Mm -hmm. So like yeah, when he taught us this, uh, this Chin Mudra, it's becoming very clear. Sleep, waking and dream state. Yes. And the, and the Atma. Okay, so and this, this is one I am the Paramatma. The Jeevatma has joined the Paramatma. Drop the three states, waking, dream and sleep. The Jeevatma has joined the Paramatma. That is the Satyam Jnana Manantam. That is the ultimate truth. So you can remember with the help of Chin Mudra. You can remember with the help of... Uh, these are all symbols. These are all... Uh, you. Ultimately, what happens is this knowledge becomes more deep in our subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Only then the Sakshi Bhava will come. And mm -hmm. once you have lived the Sakshi Bhava for a few, a couple of years, then your mind will start moving in the direction of Brahma. Okay. Okay. From Jiva Bhava to Sakshi Bhava, it takes some time. You have to remain, you have to come out of Jiva Bhava, remain in Sakshi Bhava for a few years. Mm -hmm. Keep learning the scriptures in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Don't drop the scriptures at all. Throughout mm -hmm. your life, every Saturday, every Wednesday, come for the sessions. Let the scriptures do their work. Yeah, yeah. I only spend some time behind the scriptures and I am doing the Shravanam. Let the Shravanam happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Shravanam then becomes Mananam. Automatically it will become. Yes, You don't yes. have to do anything. 
Yes, yes. So people who are in the who are who are learning the Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Sutras, constantly they are in touch with the scriptures. What happens is when your mind is free, you should ask the question: what is the mind thinking about? Is it the mind thinking about the worries? Or is suddenly his mind started thinking about Chin Mudra? Start mm. thinking about what is the symbol behind the Chin Mudra. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Does it think about Mundaka Upanishad, the two Dwa Suparna Mantra? These are the transformations which happen. And then what happens is from G Sakshi Bhava, you go to Brahma Bhava. That is a huge transformation. It gives you freedom from rebirth. Mm -hmm. That is a that will happen once you have finished the 10 Upanishads, 12 Upanishad study, and the Brahma Bhava then slowly starts coming into your subconscious mind. Right, right, right. Am Brahma see, becomes very clear. See, today yes. I presented the Mahavakya chart. Yes. The Mahavakya chart will not remain as a chart outside, but it will become one with your being. Mm -hmm. See, we are all the supreme being. We are all a being. See, we are all a pure being. Always remember that. I am a pure conscious being. In that conscious being presence, this body is appearing and these enjoyments are appearing. Body is a mother, body is a father, body is a sister. It is, it's an all in appearances. It will come, it will go. Yeah. It is only an appearance. Remember this fact. Yeah. I am what I am, that pure canvas on which all this is coming in. Will I die as a in that as a consciousness? Do I have death? No. I am pure being. There is no death for the conscious being. I am immortal being. This should become your maha mantra. Yeah. I am the conscious being, I am immortal being. I am conscious being, I am immortal being. This is my mantra. The moment this becomes my mantra, what happens? All the other small, small difficulties I face in life, they don't matter. They don't matter. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing that shift slowly. I am seeing that it shift. It will happen. Surely the shift will happen. When you are with the scriptures, this will happen. Yeah, yeah. I have one more thing. I somewhere I put a parameter of saying that uh, I will know I've shifted from the triangulation of the uh, uh, you know Jeev Bhava to the Sakshi Bhava when I'm able to see the oneness. Okay, because yeah. right now I'm not being able to see the oneness. I see a lot of separateness. Yes, that is because Jiva Bhava. Ha, so was, I want that separateness to drop, but not happen. No, no, it will happen. It is a slow process. It is you cannot rush it. It will happen. Mm -hmm. Jiva Bhava, the triangular formula, for, 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 format we have lived for millions of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will happen according to the scriptures. It will happen. When it happens, we can't say. But there you one. Everything is one. Huh? It's yes. One. Yes. There is what happens is wow. Aham Brahma Asmi, I am the Chaitanyam principle. Again and again, when you reflect on the Chaitanyam principle, what happens is that becomes your uh -huh. conscious being. So I abide in the, there will be abides in the, yes, not in the body form. Not in the body. You see, no, today, I don't see in the body form. Yes, the, I see the body, but I'm not the body. And the others also not body. I see the others are also not the body. They only are seeing their bodies. They are not the body. Neither I should be worried about my own death, neither should I be worried about others' death because they are in ignorant like me. And neither should I get attached to somebody else's vasanas. Yes, that is their vasanas, you know. They're not consciousness, huh? Yes, they are not, they, they don't know that they are conscious being. They live as vasana being. They live as jiva. Jiva is attached to his vasanas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're saying this process will, it, it's a process. It, it is a natural process. 
and keep doing it. Naturally. It will happen naturally like a flower blooms. Yeah. Nobody will go and poke the flower. Come on, come on. I want you to bloom. You cannot, yeah. uh, you, the bud cannot be poked with a needle. Come on, bloom, bloom. Similarly, our mind, you cannot, you cannot poke our mind and say, come on. Yes. It's not possible. It's a so, natural flavor. So this is also somewhere some part of my, my karma, my prarab karma. Which yes, prarab the karma. You, to the see, you, what, what happens is you learn to see the prarab the karma as a lower order. Ah, TK chalta hai, you know. Let it come. I will face it. Let it come. I will face it. <coughs> you gain the strength of Atma. Mm. Through the strength of Atma, you drop your identification, the prarab, the karma led a life as reality. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, but has said that you, you enjoy the ice cream without the after effect. <laughs> you see, <laughs> that is what is Jeevan Mukti. Yes. Well put, uh, but very nice. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Shama, tell me. Hey, uh, Shikuji. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, I and it's a bit related to Saru's question, and this is in reference specifically to verse two. You know, karma niya kamyate manimana ha. Yeah. So it's quite clear that wherever our desires are going, we gravitate towards there, isn't it? So yes. the question was, so when we think about our karmas, is it um, always driven by karma or could it be just because, for example, uh, as a grahasta, I'm very aware of like what my duties are, you know. So are they, am I to understand, is it all karma driven or, you know, this is a bit of a confusion. Yeah, you see, life as it is, stands today is driven by our karma. Karma, karma or karma? Kar no. karma? karma leads to karma. Abhidya leads to karma. Karma leads to karma. Avidya is ignorance. I don't know myself. Because I don't know myself, the vasanas are sprouting in my mind. I can't remain myself as a sakshi. Because I can't remain and hold on to the truth, the mind keeps on bursting into desires after desires, desires after desires. I fulfill one desire, I feel I'm not happy. Again, another desire comes, again, I am not happy, again, I get into action. So this Abhidya, Kama, Karma are the three knots. The three knots are tied together, are tying the Jiva to this body. Suppose the, the uh, ignorance, desire and action are not there in the body, can you imagine yourself without the three? How will you be? I'll be very free. That is called as Jeevan Mukti. Yeah, no, those are very good because we, we've been continuously kind of the, uh, the moksha and the liberation principle. There is no doubt about it. You know, how do we end our human suffering? Yeah. It's very clear. Yeah. But this, um, you know, this link between avidya, karma and karma. So... In other words, we are constantly, there is no doubt that we have in terms of the vidya, you know, the shravanam, mananam, all nididhyasana is constantly leading us to the affirmation and assertion. I can say very clearly that I actually confidently relate to the whole principle which the Vedanta is trying to teach me. Yeah. However, so... Should it not, I mean, the, I still really have this issue about my, my all that karma which I'm doing, is it all related to karma, desire, for instance, like no, I'm no, on no, my... No. All are not related to karma, uh, karma, uh, uh, karma alone. Yeah, this is what I'm asking. There, there is something called as prarabdha karma of others. 
which will force you to do action. It is not your own karma. Like if I need to do something for my son and my daughter, yes, your son, it is my prarabdha. Yes, it's your prarabdha karma. See, prarabdha karma, uh, uh, karma is a very, very, it's a very big, it's a very big uh, uh, canvas. In that canvas called prarabdha karma, the whole uh, society is there. My son is there, my society where I'm living is there, my neighbor is there, my parents are there, my siblings are there, everybody is there in that canvas. I am only a small individual in that canvas. Now, I have my own desire, is, uh, is, is, through that desire, I can say yes, yes, you know? So, so second verse relates to our own personal desires, not yes. relating to the karmas, which is a niyamit karma or, yes. you know, Yes. Yeah, the karma. body is born for not only for satisfying our karma, body okay. is also born because it is the cosmic karma. Right. You are born because your son needs you to be doing certain actions for you. Correct. And you do certain actions for the son. You have done okay. some actions for your mother. Mother has done certain actions for you. This is okay. cosmic karma. So it's bound to happen. Yes, it will be bound to happen. Right. You see, the a lot, a, the, there is a pressure inside all of us in our minds every single day for action, 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 action. It is the Lord who is present. It is the Maya Shakti, which is the mind bursting into activity every single day for all of us. Yeah, no, even in some messages which I was writing to my daughter-in-law, yeah. I was actually saying, I said, let us not question anything because it looks like Mother Nature herself yes. is actually using each one of us to reach her own, you know, goal, you know, that's which correct. is... That's right. Yeah? You see, that, 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 is the, that is the way for a uh, stress-free living. Right. Okay. You live and let others live. That's all. Yeah. And it all happened because she was saying so many thank yous and she was see, being so grateful that it was very uncomfortable for me. And I said, look, I am not doing anything for yes. you. You're this not is, doing anything. This is, this is your karma. You are in this family. Yeah. And so, uh, it, you know, it is my karma. You are in this family. And therefore, let us all enjoy live peace learn to live peacefully happily that's it yeah and i couldn't help telling i said look in where in my philosophical background the upanishadic i said really nobody is doing anything for any you know it's the whole it is the a final world you see this is yeah. the world of this is the world of the lord it is each yeah. for us world you see once mm -hmm. you have that vision then your life becomes extremely simple. Okay, so I'm very satisfied because otherwise I was thinking, is it, am I somewhere driven by my desire that, you know, yeah. I'm... So, yeah, now you, so now you have understood clearly. Good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else has a question? And uh, finally, sorry, so am I, can I sort of think of myself at this point of my vana prastha that I am actually a uh, karma sannyasi? Yeah? Yeah, yeah? No, yeah, jnana karma sannyasi. Jnana so, karma sannyasi. Yeah, always yeah, jnana you, karma. You, you go into the jnana karma sannyasi, yeah. the, the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, that yeah. is your, that is where you are as per vana prastha. Yeah, and, and we uh, are, yeah, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. and yeah, and sorry, so this, you know, the, the, the final sage who becomes where then there is no karma, no sannyasa, so sage doesn't happen just, just like that, you know, yeah. it is a very slow, maybe very over gradual several. process, it is not uh, overnight, uh, uh, it happens, no, it is not like that. Okay. That is why we say Shravanam Mananam Nidityasana. Yeah, this, is a, just... this is a traditional way of learning the Veda. Yeah. You see, don't be in a rush. Like I said, 
uh, let things happen naturally. Yeah. I only take small, small steps for this growth of my own mind into making it a divine mind. Today, from Prakrita, natural Jeeva Bhava, Jeeva Bhava I am now flowering into higher bhava, which is Sakshi Bhava. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Sakshi Bhava, whenever it becomes Brahma Bhava, that is Ishwara's grace for me. And therefore, I cannot, Lord, I cannot do that. It is, yeah. it is a blessing from the higher. So in the final run, it is the grace of God. Yes, it is 100% the grace of the Lord. Even now, you have come to the second Upanishad of learning and finished the second Upanishad, now getting into a slightly intense version. It is a grace of the Lord. We don't know. COVID situation brought in a complete turmoil in the whole world. We don't know. So every day is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Count our blessings every day. That's it. You know, we live. Today I'm very happy. That's it. What happens tomorrow? Let me see tomorrow. Let me not be anxious about the tomorrow. Yeah. So I cannot, uh, spiritually speaking, I cannot actually 100% say, this is how I should feel. You no, know, no, don't something. put conditions on your mind. This is putting conditions on your mind. Yeah. See, try not to have, I am a jiva. Mm. Remind yourself, I am a conscious being. That's all. Okay. Jeeva. That is what is called a Sakshi Bhav. Okay. The moment you think you are Jiva, then you're putting conditions. You're putting yourself too many lists. I must do this. I must do this. My mind should not think of this. My mind should not think of this. It cannot Big happen. Box. Big box. The same. It will never the happen. Way yeah, the way we do our material life, yeah, material life it's the same okay. method. Is the same method we apply, which does not work in this. It doesn't spiritual work in spirituality. Spirituality is a blossoming. It is unfolding of a except, divine nature. Except the task list. Oh, I have to attend yeah. the. Uh, you can class. keep a task list. Or here also, I want to do Mundak Upanishad. I want to attend right. classes. These are task lists. I must but, make notes. Yeah, yeah, I must make notes. I must learn. These are all very nice things to go about. Okay. But don't insist that karma phala <laughs> should happen tomorrow morning. Correct. See, the yeah. moment you say I should wake up tomorrow morning as if I am the sun, a completely free bird, you know, it will not happen. Uh, I know. No, I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. If there are no other questions, we can wind up. I think Gopadi probably wants to say something. Gopadi? Yeah. Gopadi, do you want to say something? No, no, she doesn't want to say something. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. We'll do. Okay, I want to know from you. Do you want me to uh, do that uh, Anumuti Prakasha? Uh, Tell you go verse by verse, or just tell you the important uh, 25 30 verses which are there, and then focus only on that. Verse by verse, you want verse by verse. It might take a lot, it might take a long time. Doesn't matter. Well, what's the rush? What's the rush? You just explain. Blossoming. What's the rush? Slowly blossoming. Yeah, slowly. And also, I just, I'm, the way I'm uh, understanding Upanishads and uh, knowing, the, there is a structure. So I'm imagining, I've never read Anubhutiya Prakasha, but I'm imagining that there must be a systematic uh, gradation. Yeah, that if is, you're that picking is. up only a few verses, uh, I yeah, mean, it'll yeah. feel good, but it will just not be... Okay, <laughs> I'll give it a try. I'll see how fast I can finish. I will try. Uh, I, I, nevertheless, I will not go into the depth of each verse, but I will go through the verses. Yeah, to just so see you the get pattern. Gist of it, yeah. But depth also, depth... No, <laughs> for next five years, I'll be doing Anubhuti Prakasha. <laughs> Only you and me will be there, Shama, everybody will disappear. Uh, Shikaji, sir, because, yeah. you know, I'm just imagining about Anubhuti, because the way we see is that um, 
vidya gnanam or brahma gnanam you get through shruti you get through yukti so we are doing constantly some reflection and thinking about it yeah. and then finally it is anubhuti isn't it yeah, yeah. anubhava it's a, it's a anubhava experience yes so this i'm imagining this anubhuti prakasha is probably dealing with that i'm this is my yeah, imagination yeah. no no it's okay well, let's go through it you will get an idea okay. then if you if you like this then i will do the other upanishad the uh, keno upanishad also like that you know okay thank you it's also uh, whose text will you be using for anubhuti prakasha uh, it is it is a text called as anubhuti prakasha by vidyaranya um, yeah. i will send you the 100 verses uh, i will send you next week Plus the notes, I have already shared the notes, but uh, uh, I, uh, have you all got the notes of Anubhuti Prakasha? I had shared it about three weeks ago on WhatsApp. Okay, I'll check that up. Okay, if not, I will send it to you again, doesn't matter. I will, I will send you the uh, notes next week and also the 100 verses by itself. I will also try to send you that. So that you can just see the verses and if you want to run through the, all the hundred verses, you know, just verse by verse, that's it. So, so is that next week we are starting? Yeah, next week we are going to start. the. Uh, it's a very, very huge text of, uh, uh, you know, it, it consists of 20 chapters. Uh, I'll be doing this, this sixth chapter there of uh, Munda Kopanishad. Um, but anyway, I will send you the actual text so that you know what the text is. Okay. See, it, it, is, it is a reflection on Munda Kopanishad by the same author as Panchadasi. Brilliant. You know, he is, he is amazing analysis. <laughs> is he, is, how his mind works is something brilliant, you know. He's, he's an acharya, he's a teacher. So it's, yeah. uh, let's see how it goes. Thank you. Good night. Thank you so much. Hari Om. Hari Om. Thank you. Thank you, Shakaji. Good night. Oh, thank you, Bharat. Thank you. Good night.